Our kids have spent a large part of their lives locked up at home, wearing masks when stepping outside, gasping for air. And I'm not even talking about the current global pandemic. This has been our reality in winter months across many states in our country for nearly a decade. My name is Dr. Marcus Rani. I am your champion of well-being, and I'll be bringing you the big picture of how the climate crisis is impacting our health. The hard truth is that the negative consequences of air pollution on our body is very real. It's affecting our lives now. Heart disease, stroke, lower respiratory infections, lung cancer, diabetes, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, the list goes on and air pollution is a risk factor for many of these leading causes of death happening in the millions. Not one state in our country met the WHO recommendation for its criteria on ambient particulate matter air quality of less than 10 micrograms per cubic meter. And what's worse is that our actions are now impacting our children. Have you seen the images of charred lungs? Now just imagine babies being born already with damaged lungs, compromised even before taking their first breath. All of this disturbing data should shock us into demanding answers. But why is it then that year after year we are still fighting just to breathe? Let me take you through all of it one by one. You see, we live in crowded cities. At least 30 cities are densely populated with 100 people per square hectare. 30% of those households own a vehicle, either a two or four wheeler and all of them are pumping air pollutants out into the air. And what's happened during the pandemic? Well, the demand for these personal vehicles has just increased. Liquid petroleum gas, LPG or natural gas, has helped in most cities, but many households still continue to use polluting fuels like kerosene, biomass and coal. And our demands for thermal power and coal generation have shot up in a decade with renewable sources still trailing very far behind. And then there is the cyclical crop burnings which happens in farms year after year in which there has been very little policy intervention. So why am I telling you all of this? What has the climate crisis got to do with our health? Isn't it all just environmental? Actually, no. They are the two sides of the same coin. Air pollution is the driving force for Earth's warming, powering the greenhouse effect. The intensity, the frequency of the environmental changes which we see are shooting up and they're happening now. Extreme weather events like heat waves and droughts and floods and hurricanes happening year after year, multiple times per year. And a lot of these events have just driven major urbanization, people moving to the cities, and that in turn is leading to even more of an increase in vehicles and even more of an increase in pollutants, impacting the food supply, impacting our soil, the fresh water, and ultimately the fresh air that we have available to breathe. The earth is warming up and it's not good news. So how does all of this impact me and my life. How does it impact you? Let me break down what happens to you inside of your body when you take in all of this toxic air. On average, we breathe around 10 liters of air per minute, two and a half times that when you're exercising. And as we breathe in, we're taking in all of those major air pollutants. Particulate matter or soot is linked with chronic bronchitis, aggravated asthma, cardiovascular effects like heart attacks, and also with premature death. Ozone decreases our lung function. It causes respiratory symptoms such as bronchoconstriction. Have you been feeling fatigued recently, dizzy, nauseous, increase in the number of your headaches? Well, maybe you can thank carbon monoxide poisoning for that. 
and sulfur dioxide, well that leads to skin diseases and lung diseases. And nitric oxide just increases the risk of respiratory infections and in large doses can also potentially lead to pulmonary edema. But whilst we wait for the big changes, I am a big believer of saying start small, start today. And so here's what you can do to help by beginning these small changes. Number one, switch off and switch off now. That means when you buy your electronics, look out for the Energy Star levels rating on them as well. Wherever you can, shift to solar, start small and just keep going. Walking is great too. It's good cardio, it's good for the environment and so is taking and using public transport. Keep your cars, keep your bikes properly tuned. Switch off the engine when you're waiting at the signal. And most of all, also remember to buy local and eat local as well. You see, all of these small changes, they can also go a long way for helping all of us adopt and change our lives. And ultimately, everything will begin with the actions that you and I take starting today. Thank you.